Hey folks, Josephine Sabora here. Been a while since I've done my last review, which was The Invisible Man, the, uh, the latest version from Blumhouse. Well, it's sad to say I'm not a big fan of this one. And I could have been. I wanted to enjoy it, but I couldn't. Um, however, if you love the movie, that's cool. Um, I did forgot to mention in the review that, yeah, there are some silly moments, too, like when Cecilia, played by Elizabeth Moss, you know, was about to bring out uh, a bag of coffee, you know, and dump it all the way around the kitchen floor. And she even bought a knife just in case. So when he appears, he'll be able to attack her. Yeah, just walking around in footsteps. But then, next thing you know... She got the ladder, which was the ladder that she bought as a present for um, her friend, along with uh, his daughter, knowing that there's going to be the inheritance coming around. But she uses that same ladder to climb up the attic, hoping that if he shows up, she's going to dump paint over him. Yeah. Either way, I mean, there's been several versions of the Invisible Man, as we all know. It could be a hero or a villain. I mean, it all caused because of an accident that occurred for, for their latest experiment. This version, on the other hand, is just about coming up with the latest experiment, but you just have to wear a mask, which, will, which has all these uh, security cam all the way around your body. And you're going to be the one to turn invisible. So it proves that he actually wasn't dead at all. This was just a setup. So I don't know. I, I prefer all the the classics and the underrated ver gems out there. You know, like Memoirs of the Abysmal Man, Hollow Man, The Abysmal Man from 1933, The Invisible Woman is even better than this, or any other. That's in my opinion. But if you love this version, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. It's your choice. Therefore, um, to get away from it all, I finally did check out the movie that I've been waiting ever since uh, I saw the trailer, ever since they announced it a year ago. But unfortunately, it, it didn't get released until just recently. Yeah, it was supposed to be scheduled on September 27 of last year, but due to the um, the recent mass shootings of Dayton and El Paso, Texas, which is the local Walmart over there, and the fact that this movie uh, deals with uh, political satire, that, uh, yeah, because, you know, everyone's political these days, whether it be Republican, Democrats, uh, liberation, I mean, you name it. I mean, a film like this is going to be taken off the shelves um, through the studio of Universal Pictures. And that is the movie called The Hunt. Which is a story about uh, 12 strangers who are being gagged into the clearing somewhere in a remote location of Manners Gate and they're being chosen to be hunted by a bunch of elite uh, liberals as well as conservatives going around and it's only one woman to stop it. I, I know they, they did put an advertisement where it even shows a pig <laughs> uh, just for the excitement of them all because the pig's going to be the, the target of them all. Yeah, because the pig is going to be the target. And it has all these critical quotes, and there's telling you by the marketing strategy that it's the most talk about movie of the year, is that no one ha actually seen. So, and it says decide for yourself. So, yeah, the film got a, a theatrical release for a little while on March 14. Friday the 13th of this year. But, as we all know, the coronavirus um, 
pandemic situation that we're going through. Yes, the film came out for like a few days and then it got shut down. So now it went straight to digital. Which that's probably where I had a chance to check it out. And there's been a lot of hunting movies out there, of course. You know, we had Hard Target with Jean Claude Van Damme, which was released by Universal. We had Surviving the Game with Ice T. Um, there was um, Battle Royale. There's even films like Your Next, The Moral Stage Risk Game. Um, the Belko Experiment was pretty much like that, too. And of course, uh, just recently, Ready or Not, um, with Samantha Weaving. And that just recently came out last year, which amazingly enough, the trailer came out uh, just when this film was already playing in theaters, I think. Or perhaps maybe it came out after. Could be wrong, but I know that film was being talked about. And apparently that became a surprise. <laughs> so I enjoyed that one. So I wanted to check this one out for a while, and I'm glad just to see how this movie is going to turn out. I mean, will it be a letdown, or just going to be a big surprise? Well, I went to number two. <laughs> it was surprisingly good. Um, smart writing. Um, amazing lead. Incredible uh, blood carnage, gore, violence, and a lot of political satire that's putting into it. I guess for this particular story here is that the conservatives and all the rest of these entire political groups are assholes and morons. So of course they're going to get exactly what they deserve, no matter what, the way they, they're portrayed. I mean, I, I know it's pretty fucked up, but that's how it had to be. So anyway, it stars Betty Gilpin from the TV series uh, Glow that's on Netflix. Yeah, it's based on the true events of of gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I mean, if you're familiar with that, back in the 80s. Uh, Ike Barinholtz, Emma Roberts, yes, Emma Roberts, the daughter of actor... Um, of actor Eric Roberts, but she's been in several films like Where the Millers. She was even in a short-lived TV series on Fox called Scream Queens. Among others, even Nancy Drew, Hilary Swank. Yep, Oscar-nominated, the Oscar-winning actress. I know she's been in a lot of work that she's been in, such as The Next Karate Kid. But then she went on to do films like Boys Don't Cry, Million Dollar Baby, among others, Wayne DeBall, Ethan Suppley from the TV show My Name is Earl, but he was also in the movie Remember the Titans, you know, with Denzel Washington, Justin Harley, Glenn Harbiton, Macon Blair, Amy Madigan, yes, Amy Madigan from Uncle Buck, Field of Dreams, and The Dark Calf. Hard to believe I got to see her in this film because she's she's a lot older now. Um, another star, uh, Reed Burney, who was from the movie Crime Wave, that was by Sam Raimi, but it was written by the Corn Brothers. Yeah, I do have the Blu-ray, by the way, <laughs> and I did do my review a long time ago. A very underrated uh, comedy. Terry Wybe, Stuart Simpson, and Jim Clock. It's written by Nick Kloss and Damon Lindelof, and it's directed by Craig Sobel. Be advised, this review will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, check it out before watching this. So, here we go. The movie begins what started out as a group texting site. Eventually, just joins in by a woman named Ophina, 
who's about to celebrate an upcoming hunting party for the elite's liberals by hunting the conservatives known simply as the deplorables, which is actually a phrase uh, that was said by Hillary Clinton during the 2016 presidential election campaign speech that she was given, referred to as basket of deplorables, yeah, which is going against for the political parties of Democrats and Republicans. So it was her against uh, Donald Trump. Eventually he won for presidency and the whole 2016 political race was a disaster. Yeah, well, let's not get into that. Anyway, but back to the story. Later on her private jet, where we get to meet all the elite uh, liberals, including that one guy who was just asking that stewardess that he just had caviar and was telling him that you need to try this out. It tastes so good if he, if he gets a chance. Suddenly, a man just came by going completely nuts, knowing that one of the members came by just to knock him out. But he just stabs him with a pen, and they told him, no, you, sh you shouldn't do that before we we're finally arriving. But then Alfina had came by and stabs him with a high heel shoe in the eye. I'm like, why does it always have to be the eye? in these movies it's totally gross so then they stick them strictly to into so they stick them directly back into the cargo with the rest of the captives which that's what led to 11 captives that's being woken up all gagged into the forest and once they made it into the clearing of a remote location known for the conspiracy theorists Manor Gate well, um, it was only just uh, captives of, of both men and women. One guy just took out a crowbar and was opening a crate, which reveals a pig and a cachet of weapons, which includes machine guns, knives, those hedge clipper types, you name it. Lots of weapons that they needed so they'll be able to survive only to be attacked by all these hunters around. So their heads have been blown off, you know, bodies have been blown apart too with all these mines and all these traps that you know both a guy and a gal have been into and they all try to escape only to be a, to be shot by all these arrows, you know, using all these archeries that they have, machine guns. So one didn't survive, but three of them yeah, two guys and a girl had escaped directly through a barbed wire fence to the gas station and then they realized they're actually in a state called Arkansas that's being uh, said by the two couples uh, that are living in this uh, gas station known as Mom and Pop both played by Amy Madigan and Reed Burney hard to believe um, they're trying at first they thought they were gonna rob the bank, but they're not They're just telling them to call the police because they're being attacked only to discover that they're actually working for them so now Just when when one girl just had the donuts Realizing that it was poison The mom and pop just goes around killing all three of them and put them directly into the basement um, That is until we meet a captive who's a woman named Crystal who's played by Betty Gilpin who arrives at the gas station only to discover after getting a pack of cigarettes that they were too expensive and plus it was all empty so that's where she goes around hears like a, a radio call knowing that she's part of the the entire uh, liberals so now she was ready to beat the shit out of these two, grab the shotgun from from Ma and just shoot them all the way down. Same goes with with Pa. So they're both killed. And now she spotted a truck outside, which eventually uses a false Arkansas license plate. And that's where it reveals a Cronian number plate. So it looks like 
she's in a, another country. Then she suddenly spots another captive who's a conspiracy theorist, podcaster, basically a Rush Limbaugh type named Gary, played by Ethan Suplee. They boarded on, on a train that are full with refugees, but Gary basically didn't believe that these, these so-called refugees are actually crisis actors. But they're being raided by Cronian soldiers for the entire train, so once they got out of there. Gary tries to convince the soldiers of Mandergate and the refugee proclaimed that, admitting to Gary that this was just part of the act so they'll be safe. But Gary couldn't believe that guy, so he decided that, because he did realize that this guy was an actor, so he didn't want them to get caught, and he was actually working for them, so they'd be on their side. So, with that aside, Gary just took out a grenade from one of the soldiers, and decided to dump it directly into the actor, and he explodes. Just kill them, and then Crystal's being taken directly to a refugee camp, which at this rate um, he got to meet um, the Dawn, that's played by Wayne DeBall, um, which of course um, he was the escaped prisoner of the camp, and he's the American envoy that would arrive to take him directly to the embassy, which. Yeah, one of the, the leaders, of course, was eating uh, <laughs> some um, some pickled eggs and, and all. So then, trying to admit what Dawn has been doing, they, they both escaped, uh, joining in with this um, one guy who eventually um, turns out that this whole thing was a setup as what Crystal begins to discover just when they're trying to drive by all the way um, straight into um, the camp uh, Crystal just just um, kicked him out and eventually run over him for his head because we found out that he was responsible for killing Gary by dumping him into the trunk and just you know, who's already been killed and that's where um, Crystal actually tells a very smart, intelligent um, story about uh, the tortoise and the hare, which is simply called the Jack Rabbit and the Box Turtle. Um, which I thought this was very impressive uh, for the script. Um, which at this point on, you know the story because the hare always wins. You know, the tortoise is very slow. So you know the hare is going to win anyway. So the idea of this was that, you know, the jackrabbit kills the box turtle after he lost. Because he always wins. Um, so now they're thinking to themselves, are we the jackrabbits? Or are we the box turtles? Well, anyway, uh, once they uh, got into the camp, um, Crystal joining in with Dawn uh, kills all the hunters around, in, including Sergeant Dale, which then that's where we reveal the secret that Dawn was actually working with um, Athena the whole time. Yeah, that was the big uh, spoiler right there. So, as you hear um, from, through the radio, and I know they're going around making all these jokes about other movies too, <laughs> and other stuff. Um, we also learned that Sergeant Dale uh, was a National Guardsman, you know. Also, which at this rate, uh, we learned that uh, that Crystal asked actually, which we learned that Alfina, even for this location, was that. Um, we also begin to learn that you know they actually fought in Afghanistan, and then and all this other information here, and then of course Crystal did kill them. 
So that's what led to um, the final act when Crystal finally goes after Alfina inside her house. And this is where they make a conversation. They revealed um, Crystal's past history and only to discover that they got the wrong Crystal. It was actually one of her cousins. That's the same name. So that's where it led to a brutal fight, mano a mano, between Crystal and Alfina. And there we have it. Yeah. Surprisingly, uh, excellent movie. Um, wasn't disappointed at all. And just to be aware, yes, there's actually a happy ending. No downbeat ending that I was expecting to see, or, or any of those sequel, sequel bait endings that they often put in these movies. Uh, but they really nailed it. Um, it had some smart, intelligent writing, all done by Nick Kuss and Damon Lindelof. Got to give them credit for that. Uh, great direction by Craig Sorbell. Amazing cinematography by Darren Turnan. A lot of great editing by Jane Russell, and and a great score by Nathan Barr. And the cast was. Um, Definitely excellent, uh, considering the fact that they're playing the conservatives who are basically morons. You know, they're they're basically like the SJWs or the the other um, Democrat Republicans or any other types of political parties that they're in. I mean, it's like you know you're you're not going to trust these guys. You know you won't. So of course they're going to get killed. Um, and yeah, I mean even for even those conspiracy theorists out there. <laughs> You know you can't trust them. But it seemed like the only one that's the hero, the heroine itself, was, of course, um, Crystal Creasy. And, you know, Betty Gilpin definitely played an a, a giant, enormous badass in this role. I mean, she really nailed it. I mean, you really trust her more than anyone else here because everyone else is just, you know, either... A traitor or just another bad guy or any other like you can't even trust him but I mean it is sad that some of the other people didn't didn't des it's sad that some people got killed even though they didn't deserve it but whatever I mean that's all it matters here um, Hillary Swank of course um, terrific villain as Ofina Stone that's her name I mean you know that deep down a bit I mean she you know she's the one that's responsible for this even though it started out as a joke as she referred to but technically speaking you know that she's really taking it way too seriously and that's what she's doing because she doesn't like anybody I mean she's a sick psychopath uh, as for the rest of the cast I mean Emma Roberts gets a bit of a tiny role I mean at first this this kind of tricks the story because you're expecting she was going to be the lead in this film, but she wasn't because she's only there for like a few minutes until her head gets blown off, so you won't see her. Eva Suplee is only there for like just uh, right in the middle of the, the the running time, only to know that he'll be killed. Um, um, other actors, I think some of which you're familiar with, of course. They're going to get it anyway. <laughs> but it was nice to see them, too. Um, it's a fast-paced um, political satire with um, lots of blood and guts. And gore, too. All graphic violence all the way. Just going around hunting other people. But I think people should definitely lighten up. I mean, it, it's not meant to take itself too seriously. That's the whole point of satirical comedies like this. I mean, it's just like all these other movies that are going for the political satire. I mean, like Dr. Strangelove, for instance. But this is quite different here. <laughs> Imagine that. This is why films like this deserves a chance. And... It's sad that this movie wasn't doing so well, too. I mean, it was it was out in theaters for a little while, for like a few days. It only made $6.5 million out of its $14 million budget. 
I mean, Universal obviously wasn't treating this film very well, and it's a shame, especially with this uh, virus coming around. So that's why theaters have been shut down. No one had a chance, but luckily for digital, at least you'll be able to see it for yourself. So that's why I recommend it. Plus, I think it's one of the better films to come out this year, um, considering the fact that this is from a Blumhouse production, but I'm hoping there'll be another Blumhouse film that'd be as excellent as this one. I mean, because I wasn't impressed by, you know, the last movie I just reviewed. I mean, I know there's another Blumhouse production film that might be much worse, but either way... But it does kind of remind me a bit like the Belko experiment because it was indeed a hunting party itself, you know, with all the bosses hunting the the employees around. Um, and of course, I had to give away. I'm going to give away that one moment too when we find out who the voice was. I mean, since I think there are people who have seen it already, it turns out to be Greg Henry. Yeah, yeah, Greg Henry from uh, Payback and the movie uh, Body Double, among others. Um, he's a great actor. It was nice to see him in a short period of time at the end. Okay. Uh, but with that aside, um, it's an excellent movie. I would definitely check it out. You should definitely check this out when you can. It's available on digital. Hopefully this film will get a Blu-ray release and DVD and even a 4K Ultra HD you know, once this whole thing is over. So, it was worth it. It really was. I, I had fun. I laughed. I bought the story. It has a bit of Tarantino in there too. I mean, sort of a mixture of uh, both. But, this is probably the best movie I've seen by far, even if I'm not into politics, which I'm not, <laughs> so it's worth it. So anyway, that's The Hunt, and I give the movie four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.